Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Night Lord's Chaos Space Marine. If you like the channel and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. So this is the finished Night Lord Chaos Space Marine. So we're going to be working our way through this, doing the base colours, the shades, then the re putting on the colours, the details, the highlights, that kind of thing. So we'll do this as the video progresses. So first off, we're going to use some Citadel Night Lords Blue. We are going to paint all of the armor panels on the battle plate with this. Next up, it's Citadel Mephist on red. We're going to paint the lenses on his helm and also those little horns on the top of his head too. We're going to give them a coat of this. They aren't winged by any stretch, but adding a little bit of red to them does make them look quite creepy. So we're going to do that and build that up later on. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Iron Hand Steel. Now the only parts we're really going to do with this is the barrel, the pieces on the power pack as always, like the exhaust and that kind of area. Then we're also going to do the tips of the bolt rounds that you can see in the magazine, and the tubes on the helmet. I'm not going to do the parts of the bolter around the casing silver on this. I'm just going to keep them all black because of the Night Lords and their habit of appearing out of the darkness and slaughtering people, I thought I'd keep the bolters pretty much all in black. So I'm going to use Citadel Retributor armor now. This is going to be to do all of the armor trim and the bulk of the bolt rounds that you can see in that magazine there. Just get a nice smooth layer of Retributor armor and we can move on to the next layer. Next up, Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to do the lower portion of the helm. So you've got those sections on the cheek and the grill at the front as well. I wanted to do this and paint it up in kind of bone colours so you get that effect of the half skull plate that a lot of them tend to have. So if you haven't got any of those half skull helms that are specific for Night Lords, then you can just paint up the lower half of the Chaos Space Marines helms, get them looking a bit creepy. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Bugman's Glow. This is going to be to do the tabard at the front there. I'm going to make that into a large flap of skin. And then I'm also going to use it to do the kind of wraps that are going around the holster on his hip. And also the belt as well, because that seems to be made of the same wrap. So I'm just going to do them as though they're strips of skin that is used to hold on his holster and pouch. And obviously that nice big flap of skin hanging down at the front. Now for some Citadel Corn Red, we're going to use this to do the reverse side of the tabard where you're just going to get that kind of fleshy colour rather than the skin colour. And the final base colour is going to be Citadel Bane Blade Brown. We're going to use this to do the pouches and the holster.
Now coming onto the shades now, some nice quick layers coming up. So we're going to use Citadel Drucci Violet to do the horns and the lenses. So those bits that we used Mephist on red on. We use a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade just to do that nice tabard of skin and the little strips of skin holding the holster and the belt and stuff like that. Seraphim Sepia is going to be used to do the bone coloured areas. So if there's any little spiny growths or anything like that on the miniature, you could use the Sepia to go over the Rakar flesh. I'm going to use some Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. It's going to be to do the fleshy parts at the back of the tabard. So give that a nice coat of that so you get the shades in there. Then we can highlight that and make it look a bit grim at the end. I'm going to use Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. This is going to be to do the holster and the pouch. Citadel Null Oil is going to be used to do all of the armour and all of the iron hand steel sections too. We're not going to be using this on the Retributor armour, just on the blue armour and the silvery metallics there. To finish off the shades, we're going to use Citadel Grax Earth Shade. It's just going to be to do all of the Retributor armour, get that gold nice and grim and dirty. Returning to the colours now, we're going to use Citadel Night Lord's Blue and start reapplying the blue to the battle plate. So when you're reapplying this, you want to think about where the light is going to be catching the armour. So if you think about the light coming down from above, you're going to have like sort of the top of the shoulder pad or the pauldrons really, really blue, whereas the areas at the back of that pauldron where it's angled is going to be more shaded, so you're just going to leave the shade there. And the same on all the armour plates here as well, like the front of that shin is going to be darker than the back of the shin because there's going to be more light catching the back. And just work your way through the model doing that. With the Night Lord's Blue now in place, we're going to use some Citadel Macrag Blue. And this is going to be to do the highlights. So you want to be doing maybe about 50% of the Night Lord's Blue using Macrag Blue. So you're leaving that shaded area on the underside of stuff, like you did with the Night Lord's Blue. You're going to leave the Night Lord's Blue there. And then put the Macrag Blue on sort of about 50% of the Night Lord's Blue. So you have all those different shades coming from the darker areas through to the lighter areas. For final highlights, we're going to use Citadel the Fang. This is just a slightly greyer blue than the Macrag blue, and there's a nice little finish for it. Doesn't make it too bright, doesn't make it too gaudy. Keeps it a little bit matte and dull. You're just going to do, again, about maybe 50% of the McCrag blue. Just enough to get those highlights on there. Make some of the details stand out on the edges and things like that. And use it like a bit of an edge highlight as well. So working on the gold now, we're going to return to Citadel Retributor Armour. You're going to apply this in much the same way as you did the blue. So you're going to think about where the light's coming from. What is going to be catching more light and leaving it duller in the areas that are going to have more shade and highlighting it 
in the areas where it is going to be catching a light. And we can build up the rest of the gold colours on that. Now it's time for Citadel Liberator Gold. We're going to start highlighting that gold. You're going to use this in the same way as that you use the McCrag Blue. So that you're going to do about 50% of the Retributor Armour in this colour. This really does start adding the shine to it. It's a really, really kind of bright gold colour, this one. So you can start adding this to about 50% of the area you did the Retributor Armour. That should start bringing the shine out on this gold. The final part of the gold, we're going to mix some Vallejo Model Air Chrome with Liberator Gold. Now we're just going to mainly do edge highlights and add a little bit more on the areas that are kind of quite flat that have already got some bright gold on there. So sort of like the back of the leg there, you can add a little bit to the middle of those bits. You can see how bright that shines because of the amount of pigment in that Model Air Chrome. But it's great for doing edge highlights and it's also great for just adding that little section of really, really bright shine to any gold on the miniature. Now it's time for Citadel Bugman's Glow and the start of a peculiarly overexposed period of the video. It allows you to see the colours quite nicely, which is fine, but it is a little bit brighter than it should be for no apparent reason as well. So we're going to be reapplying this Bugman's Glow to the flesh loincloth and also to the strips of skin which are going around the holster and around his waist you're going to be picking out all the details on this sort of like giving this the base color back but making sure that you leave that right land flesh shade in the recesses we're then going to start using a little bit of citadel pallid witch flesh mix that with the bugman's glow and start adding this lighter shade to the flap of skin on the front there now if you want to, you can use Citadel Deepkin Flesh rather than Pallid Witch Flesh. Either or works, the Deepkin Flesh will give you that slight hint of blue to it, whereas the Pallid Witch Flesh is just a kind of weird pale off-white, which works nicely to lighten up that skin. Now I'm going to mix a bit more Pallid Witch Flesh with the previous mix, lighten that up and just give this a little bit of a kind of an edge highlight just to pick out some of the details and give it that kind of ropey and bloodless look. I return to the lenses and the horns, so we're going to use Citadel and the fist on red. And we are going to pick out the details on the horns there. There's lots of little strips and smooth areas on those, so just pick out all those little bits so that all the details start to stand out. On the lenses, you're going to do a kind of crescent at the back bottom of the lens. Now we're going to start building up colours from there. Next is Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to use a thinner brush to highlight the horns, and then we're going to do a smaller crescent at the back of the eye lens too. So it's going to be about 50% of the area that you just did with the Mephist on red on those eye lenses. We are just going to pick out the little lumps and bumps and strips on those horns at the back there. Final highlight on the horns, we're going to use Citadel Wild Rider Red. I'm going to pick out all the smaller details there. We're also going to do really tiny highlights of this on the back of each lens. And finally for the lenses, we're going to use a little spot of Vallejo White, just to put a little dot at the front of each lens there. And also a tiny thin line at the back of each lens, just 
inside the bit where we've put that wild rider red. Now we're going to use some Citadel Corn Red. We're going to start reapplying the colour to the back of these skin areas. Very quick layers this. You're going to leave areas with the Carrow Bird Crimson in. Just to keep them nice and dark. And then we're going to use some of the Corn Red to just bring out those colours again. To highlight we're going to use some Citadel Wasdaka Red. We're just going to use little bits of this to highlight those Corn Red areas. So again about 50% of the Corn Red thinking about where it's going to be catching the most light and highlighting those areas a little bit more. We are then going to use Citadel Pink Horror to do the final highlights on these bits of skin. Mainly like edge highlights and picking out details like so. Now we're going to return to the little bony bits, we're going to use Citadel Ricard Flesh and start reapplying colour back to the kind of skullish bit that we're doing on the helm and also any of those little kind of claws or teeth or whatever they are that seem to grow out of the armour on Chaos Space Marines. So you need to leave the Seraphim Sepia in the shade and just build up the colour in the areas where it is going to be catching the light the most. The next colour for these bony areas is Citadel Ushabti Bone, and you're going to be doing about 50% of the area that you've just done in Rakarth Flesh, thinking about where the light is catching these areas the most, so like the top edges of things, any little bits that jut out further than the rest, you want to be capturing those areas with the Ushabti Bone. So the final highlight for the bone areas is going to be Citadel Screaming Skull and this is mainly to do some like little edge highlights and pick out some of the little detailed bits. Like so. Next up we have Citadel Balor Brown. I'm just going to use this to do some weathering and scrapes on the leather of the pouch and the holster so as you're going up the vertical parts of this you want to be doing horizontal strokes when you're doing the horizontal parts you want to be doing vertical strokes and it's basically you just want to be doing the scrapes and scuffs at an obtuse angle to the edges that you are scraping just so it gives you that nice rough finish you're not just getting those really straight edges that you would if you drag the brush down on the down strokes so do this on each of the pouches, and then we can come back with a lighter shade and do that next. The next highlight, we're going to mix some Citadel Rakar Flesh with the Balor Brown. We're going to use a thinner brush. We're just going to do what we did exactly the same before, but covering less area so that you're getting these lighter scrapes. You're also going to make sure that you don't do it 100% over all the bits that you've just done. What this will do is create some different layers of scraping and scuffing and stuff like that so that you have some parts that are lighter where it's been more deeply scraped and some parts that are darker where it's just sort of a bit of a superficial one on the surface. I'm going to add a little bit more Rakar flesh now. I'm going to do exactly the same as the last layer but again, less again. So you're just going to be doing smaller parts on each of the scuffs just to give them that deeper scraping to show where the leather's been worn a little bit more. Next we're going to be using some Vallejo black. We're going to go over all of the black, so this is the parts of the bolter, also the seals between the battle plate. Give them a nice smooth coat of black so you've got none of those colours that you've used on any of the rest of the miniature on there. And we can move on to the next colour. Next we're going to be using Vallejo German Grey. We're going to be using this to highlight all of the rubber seals between the battle plate and also the casing on the bolter and any other little sections of black that you might have on a miniature.
Now we're going to use some Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. We're just going to use this to do edge highlights on the bolter. You won't be doing this on the seals because you want to leave that black and German grey on the seal so it looks like that kind of dull rubber look. But you do want to go along and edge highlight all of the edges that will be catching light on the bolter. You can do that nicely out of focus as well, like the start of this section. Now we're going to use some Citadel Araman Blue, and we're just going to use this to do some little lightning shapes on the armour plates. So you can choose whichever armour plates you use, because it does seem that they're on random ones on different people, so whichever plates you want to use this for. We're just going to do little lightning effects on the armour. Now we're adding a little bit of white to the Araman Blue. We're just going to use this highlight colour for the areas where the lightning joins onto another little section of lightning. So you get those little crossovers or where there's a little split and the lightning forks. You want to do those areas with this lighter bit so you've got the darker bits sort of towards the end of each strip of lightning. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. And once again, we are going to do where the joins are and lighten up those, leaving some of the previous mix visible at each end. So we'll give you a lightning three colours going through it. Three shades of the similar kind of blue. Once more, adding a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'm going to do a slightly smaller area on these joins in the lightning. It's much like the power swords that I've done in the past, the sort of lightning effect on there. So I'll link up that video here. That gives you a slightly more in detail start to finish look at how I do this. And finally, we're just going to use some pure Vallejo white. We're just going to put some little spots of the light in those joins, just to give that that final little bit of brightness. You put way too much on some parts if you want to, and then have to repaint that. But you get the idea. Just want to be putting on the little specks of the lightning, and that will get them nicely illuminated. Now we're going to work on the Legion badge, or the chapter badge. We're going to use some Vallejo white to paint on the skull initially. Just want to kind of do an ovalish, circly part for the top of the skull. The little jaw sticking down beneath. And then little bits for the cheeks on either side. So we have the rough shape of the skull there. And then we're just going to fill in that colour, and then we can tidy that up on the next part. Use some Vallejo black just to paint on the eyes, nose, and put a few little lines for the teeth as well. Not 100% happy with how the nose and the eyes turned out on this guy, to be honest, but it is the technique rather than the finished example because the more you do it, the more you practice, the better it becomes. So, if you're doing an army of one, you might find that your initial chapter badge or legion badge isn't the best but as time goes by you will get better and better at doing them and by the end you'll have it nailed so on this we're just going to use a little bit of a fist on red and we're going to paint on the wings 
There's a little skip there because it was slightly off camera. But I always start with the middle of the wing, then work out roughly where the points are for the wings, and then you can fill in the gaps after that. We'll be doing a full tutorial on this chapter badge this coming Sunday, so you'll see the start to finish of that. This is the finished Night Lord, really happy with how he turned out. Love the fleshy kind of tabard that's hanging between his legs and the little strips of flesh holding the belt and the pouches there. But all in all, happy with how he turned out. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content, and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.